All right. Oh. I love this microphone. I love the stage. I love you people. I love you people. And if Kumquat weren't here, I would close the night. But Kumquat is here. And so at this moment, I am going to bring you a story that is an erotic pairing between two people. Yeah, you're right, Travis. This is an erotic pairing between two people that is going to get you both hard and wet. Don't think about it. You're both hard and wet. Yes. I've got two characters for you. One character is celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay. In every instance that is spelled incorrectly. The second character is celebrity chef Paula Dean. I'm just gonna give you one spoiler, which is at one point in the story, I am going to tell you, now it gets weirder. Okay, here we go. Gordon Ramsay slammed his fist down on the bench top, causing the silverware to jump out of line. A vein was visible in his forehead, pulsating in time with his rabid, aggravating, grieving, breathing, and threatening to burst at any given moment. His scowl was deeper than the Mariana's trench, as he regarded to dish being prepared in front of him, his expert eyes instantly picking out the slightest details that probably no one else would be bothered by. Paula Dean, he roared. I'm not doing it in a Scottish accent for obvious reasons. His excessively loud, booming voice throughout the kitchen and bounced off the tile walls in a menacing echo. What the fuck is this? It was obviously a strain for him to keep his voice from breaking on that last word, his whole body was tense with anger, his shoulders hunched, and his jaw clenched dangerously. Paula, understandably flustered, looked from her dish to Gordon and back again, her hands shaking slightly. She tried to remain calm, keeping her tone as flat as possible. Now listen here, that was her first mistake. Gordon Ramsay was not a man who appreciated being talked down to. With a reaction like a whip-cracking, Chef Ramsay's hand sliped across the bench, sending the mixing bowl in front of Paula, hurtling into the wall several meters away. Glass shards sprayed in every direction, and Paula I Paula's eyes filled with tears as the golden liquid she worked so hard to prepare dripped down the wall in winding tendrils. How many times do I have to tell you? Gordon continued, interrupting Paula's mourning. You can't create a dish entirely out of butter, you fat fuck! He was positively livid. This was the third dish Paula had ruined and had half a mind to throw her out the kitchen. But Paula Dean was just as stubborn as he was and stood her ground, refusing to budge, raising her voice to match his she argued in response, I ain't never met a southerner that didn't enjoy his butter. You can't tell me you turned down a nice woman covered a head to toe in melted butter? From under the bench, Paula produced another metal bowl filled with met melted butter, something she always tried to keep handy. Staring at Gordon, who is speechless at this point, right in the eye, she licked her lips and proceeded to pour the warm, Sticky liquid all over herself. Golden waves crashed over her platinum hair, flowed down her plump face, stained the front of her button-up shirt. It was like a disturbing parody of a shampoo advertisement. It's kind of like that. So Paula Dean was out of control, and Gordon Ramsay never met a woman like this in, her li in his life. Something about the way the greasy butter clung to her curves really got the blood flowing in his nether region. <laughs> he deftly untied his apron and planted his hands on Paula's waist. Pulling Paula into a rough embrace, Gordon frantically and ungraciously slammed his lips against hers, desperate to taste those salty tears mixed with butter. His tongue lapped at her cheeks while she giggled in her annoying accent. Eventually, she managed to free his raging penis and, using butter as a lubricant,
She began to stroke his member, none too gently. The woman could whisk like a sorceress, so let's just say she knew how to whip a man's cream. Rocking his hips to match her strokes, the thought briefly passed through Gordon's mind that there were cameras surrounding him. They were supposed to be filming a new cooking show where they just shared tips and secrets with each other, but instead, Paula was just playing with his tip. That's gross. He didn't have much time to worry about the sex tape leaking on the internet because damn, that warm batter felt good on his pulsating cock. <laughs> Paula could sense Gordon was close, so she began to jerk him more violently. She wanted to be in control of his climax as her own way of dominating the kitchen as he came gloriously a steady fountain of... <laughs> Dick milk. <laughs> she timed a hundred percent dick milk. She timed her merch movements perfectly and saved all the semen in a bowl. It takes a special kind of woman to A, stand up to Gordon Ramsay's verbal violence, and B, jerk him off. But Paula Dean had managed to do both. Yeah. Gordon watched Paula's work, entranced by her movements and the way her shirt stretched around her plump stomach as she leant over the bench to reach for the container of caster sugar. He sat perched on a wobbly stool, unfamiliar with the domestic surroundings. His elbows polished the bench top and his chin rested in his hands watery eyes, never wavering from Paula. His hands were a blur of precision as she combined her dry ingredients in her favorite mixing bowl. Yeah, precision. That's what I think about Paula Dean. Her brow was deeply furrowed in concentration as she tried to remember the exact method her great-grandmother had passing down for generations. For the first time in his life, Gordon was able to sit in the kitchen without yelling. And it was all thanks to the soothing effects or, of Paula, or more specifically, her hand job. But regardless, the atmosphere in the kitchen was surprisingly pleasant. The stove was giving off a warm orange glow, heating up the room as it baked the overglazed roast, roast chicken. Sticky and succulent, it peered out at Gordon and Paula through the grease-smeared glass of the, of the oven door, almost as if it was spying on him. Almost as if... There were a fiber optic cable that had been secretly installed in the little chicken bum hole while nobody was watching. <laughs> and here is where it gets weird. <laughs> Gordon, dear, I need your help with dessert. Paula sung out, her nasally voice grating to the ears. Gordon visibly winced. She insisted on calling him that, even though he repeatedly asked her not to. Some women just didn't get it. She was really starting to get on his nerves. Still, he gave the kitchen goddess his full and undivided attention, scooting around to the other side of the bench to meet her needs, because he knew what needs she needed met. Immediately, without consideration of her surroundings, Paula's hands flew to Gordon's crotch like a hungry pig diving into a trough full of pig slop. She licked her lips with greedy anticipation, and her beady eyes gleamed as she took his limp dick in his hand, in her hand, I guess, that was probably meant. A hint of silver, okay, a hint of silver gleamed at the tip of his cock, catching her off guard. She frowned and peered a little closer. It was a dick piercing? Yes, there was no mistaking it. Red, swollen, and inflamed, it was a French, fresh Prince Albert piercing. She was amazed, bewildered even, that Gordon hadn't told her he had done it. It wasn't as if, as if she'd never find out. A small smile curved around the edges of her thin, cracked lips as a dark thought danced through Paula's head. Gordon, now totally tame and blissfully ignorant, you do not know where this goes. 
<laughs> Continuing to stand there with his hands in his pockets, waiting for the blowjob that had just been derailed, Paula had a new plan. She winked at him sensuously, her long false eyelashes tickling her makeup cake cheek, and she turned away momentarily to rummage in her cupboards. As she bent down, however, Gordon unexpectedly tried to mount her, clearly misunderstanding the situation. She let out a mighty shriek, and he shrieked in response, and suddenly the kitchen timer was ringing, and the kitchen was enveloped in a crescendo of screaming and buzzing for a good four and a half minutes. <laughs> kind of like a threes cup. <laughs> could put that in my pants, too. Okay. Recomposing themselves and regaining their professionalism. <laughs> Gordon and Paula collaboratively finished their final touches to the main course, but Paula still needed to finish the dessert. Now they're running out of time. This time, making sure Gordon could control himself, Paula produced from the cupboard a small gas bottle with a flexible hose attached to it. She grinned, exposing her needle-like fangs. Gordon was a little apprehensive and needed to be encouraged to step closer, but he gave in eventually. Connecting the nozzle of the hose to Gordon's dick piercing was the easiest part. Told you. The hard part, the part she always struggled with, was lighting a match. <laughs> she sparked the flame up and held it to the tip of Gordon's member. As soon as the match neared the steady scream of stream of gas, a tongue of fire screeched across the kitchen. Paula cackled with glee, commenting under her breath repeatedly how awesome this was, and she'd sure proven them wrong. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck you, MPAA. Gordon was shaking his head slowly, feeling the muscles knot in his stomach. His throat felt dry and his chest felt extremely heavy. For one thing, he couldn't believe he'd agreed to do this. And for another thing, he really needed to yell. The fact that he hadn't yelled at anyone all day was building up inside of him, threatening to tear him apart from the inside out. That's what he's thinking about right now. While he, re while he watched Paula bring the small round bowls to his crotch, finally realized what he was doing. Carefully, she held the dishes to the flame, tossing the tops of what appeared to be creme brulee. A smile touched Gordon's mouth, and he felt immensely proud, excited, to, to such a fine dessert. Her hands hovering so close to his penis made his thoughts run a little too wild, though. His cock twitched slightly, and the flame veered off to one side. Suddenly out of control, Paula screeched and jerked backwards, narrowly avoiding being burnt by Gordon's fire-breathing ding-dong. <laughs> The bowl she was holding was not so lucky. Her grip failed on the bowl, was flying out of her taloned hand, shattering on the floor and oozing melted butter across the tiles. That was the final straw. Gordon drew in a deep breath and gripped his love stick firmly in both hands. <laughs> How could you ruin a perfectly good dish, you ultimate ninny? He yelled violently, his voice turning hoarse. He aimed his still blazing crotch in Paula's direction and continued to yell, I was looking forward to blowjobs and creme brulee, and now you've taken both of those things away from me. Paula dove forwards into a roll, tucking her head to her knees and landing safely out of harm's way. She snarled, banging her fangs and brandishing her manicured nails. She hissed at Gordon. Last time things had gone so well, and he'd even been lulled into a false sense of security. 
she thought that this time would work without complications, but she supposed life just wasn't that easy. He was quickly becoming independent again. And that wasn't a good thing. <laughs> Meanwhile, the cameras were still whirling. The chicken butt camera had achieved a nice panty shot of Paula. I didn't hit that sentence hard enough. Here we go. <laughs> Meanwhile, the cameras were still rolling. The chicken butt camera had achieved a nice panty shot of Paula. <laughs> and the producers couldn't ask for television any better than this. Oh shit, sorry. None of you had food, right? <laughs> if any of you had creme brulee, then you're not at Grumpy's right now. Give it up one more time for Lemon! I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. <laughs>